The Bougainville class were one of a collection of classes loosely called avisos, sloops, gunboats or patrol vessels, depending on which navy you're looking at, that existed largely because of the naval treaty system. As part of the increased restrictions of the London Naval Treaty, limits on types of cruiser and tonnage of destroyers had been put in place, but there was no limit on warships of 600 to 2,000 tonnes displacement, as long as they didn't have torpedoes, didn't have anything bigger than a 6.1 inch gun and no more than four guns in total in the 3 to 6.1 inch range, and couldn't make more than 20 knots. Whilst the French hadn't signed up for the additional limitations on destroyer tonnage, only the US, UK and Japan had, the above exemption clause where there was no limitation as long as you fit into that particular category was something they'd signed on for. And, like a number of other powers, they saw a chance to build some relatively cheap and useful vessels in this category that could serve useful peacetime roles, which would relieve the limited number of full warships, and which could also perhaps have a secondary role in an actual war. The first few of the class had been ordered whilst the London Naval Treaty was still being negotiated, but they fulfilled the requirements to be unregulated displacing just a fraction under 2,000 tonnes standard, capable of a stately 15.5 knots, courtesy of a pair of 4,300 horsepower diesel engines, although more speed was available if you cranked them to overload. Armament consisted of three single 5.5-inch guns, a pair superfying forward and one slightly raised aft, with four single 37mm cannon and four twin rifle calibre machine guns for anti-aircraft and point defence work. A small folding seaplane was carried aft of the funnels for scouting work, along with facilities to lay and sweep mines built in. The mine rails also happened to fit standard French depth charges if needed. The ships carried no armour protection specifically to speak of, but the above water elements of the hull and the superstructure were all made out of high tensile, high strength steel, which, like British Ducol and American STS, was a high-end construction-grade steel with many of the properties of low-end homogeneous armour steel. This, therefore, gave the ships a degree of protection against anything smaller than a 20mm cannon, or splinters from near misses, that was actually better than the protection provided by the hulls of the Marine Nationale's destroyers at the time. The ships were ordered in batches, with six Bougainville, Amarel Charnet, Dumont de Herville, de Entrecasteau, Rigaud de Genoui, and Savorne de Braza, I think, forming an approximate initial batch, de Ilbeville coming a couple of years later, and a last batch, La Grandière, Beautamps Beaupeur, and La Perose, being ordered toward the end of the decade. Of these, the last two would never see service. Beautamps Beaupeur was scuttled with, whilst she was still under construction in Bordeaux to prevent the Germans capturing her, whilst La Perouse had yet to be started when France fell. A number of the class were based in French Indochina, or the Indian Ocean, at the time that France fell and would remain there under Vichy control. Amaral Charnet and Dumont de Herville taking part in the Battle of Koh Chang against the Thai Navy in early 1941, with the latter vessel going on to take part in the Laconia incident as a rescue vessel. As with a number of other ships of the class, she rejoined the Allied cause in November 1942 in the aftermath of Operation Torch, whereas the Amaral Charnet remained in French Indochina and was scuttled there at the end of World War II. De Entre Casteau resisted the Allied invasion of Madagascar for some time before being damaged and driven ashore by swordfish attacks in May 1942. Le Grandier seems to have quietly hung around the Pacific until, like Dumont de Herville, she rejoined the Allied cause in November 1942, continuing in a more active role in the area thereafter. De Ilbeville was in Toulon in November 1942 and was scuttled there with the rest of the French fleet present its only engagement previously of note having been the year before when it escorted five medium-sized merchant ships from Madagascar to Dakar, but was then intercepted by a British force of four cruisers and five South African minesweepers. Unable to do anything to prevent the convoy being seized, she'd made off for safety alone. Rigaud de Genouille had perhaps the shortest career. Having been damaged in the attack at Merzel Kabir, she set sail and was almost immediately sunk by the submarine HMS Pandora. That leaves us with the last two, 
Savonin de Braza and Bougainville herself. Bougainville was operating in West African waters in latter 1941. Most of the French equatorial colonies had sided with the Free French, except for Gabon, which de Gaulle had ordered seized and Vichy had ordered reinforced. Shortly after the Vichy arrivals, a Free French flotilla with British backup arrived, and they would successfully take control of Gabon. In part of this, the Savonin de Braza, flying the flag of Free France, encountered the Bougainville. The latter ship opened fire, but Savonin de Braza proved to be the better-led and crewed vessel, rapidly sinking its sister ship in an exchange of gunfire. Before and after that particular engagement, Savonin de Braza served usefully in multiple theatres. The three survivors of the war would continue to serve until the latter part of the 1950s in a variety of overseas roles, before being sold off for scrap toward the end of the decade. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.